We kick off our programs today with our 40 minutes with Nubuke Foundation and OOA Gallery. 40 minutes with is a recreation of the insightful conversations that would usually be had with our galleries at our ArtX Lagos booths. This is our second session and it's moderated by our guest moderator, Tony Odulate. Tony is a seasoned consumer goods and FMCG senior management professional. She has 18 plus years of multinational corporate experience, and she's currently the founder and CEO Olori Beauty Enterprise Limited, an African multi-brand cosmetics manufacturing company based out of Lagos, Nigeria. Tony is also an avid art collector for many years. She's a major supporter of the African art space and community and passionate about art being integrated into our everyday lives. She believes that art should be accessible to all, not just a distinct few. And I just like to welcome her, Tui. It's lovely to have you today. Thanks very Thank much. Thanks again. So um, I'd like to welcome our audience today. Um, this is our second session of 40 Minutes With. Um, today, we're having a 40-minute conversation with Nubuke Foundation, based out of Accra, Ghana, and Out of Africa Gallery, based out of Barcelona, Spain. Um, so we're going to be taking some questions um, towards the end of the conversation, and we'll be happy to have them and use this to help us have a spirited discussion. Um, I'm going to first introduce uh, Nubuke Foundation. The Nubuke Foundation is a virtual art and cultural institution based in East Legon, Accra, Ghana. Founded in 2006, it serves as a nexus for arts and culture across the country while supporting the art artistic practices of young mid-career and experienced Ghanaian artists. The foundation works to make the appreciation of art, culture, heritage, and history accessible to all with programming that includes exhibitions, readings, talks, films, screenings, performances, seminars, and workshops. In 2019, its bespoke multi-tiered gallery opened with retail concessions, meeting areas, residency, and studio spaces a library, visit, a library, visitor's lounge, and a mix of recreational zones. And I can attest to this because I visited um, the UK Foundation physically um, earlier this year before the pandemic shut down. And I'd like to welcome Odile Tevi, who is the director thank of the Foundation. Odile, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited. Thank you. Out of our tech stocks. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I'm going to introduce Out of Africa Gallery, um, which was opened in 2011. Out of Africa Gallery has been located in the historic historic center of Stij. I hope I pronounced that correctly. The no. season <laughs> Stij. Stij. Got it. Yes. Yes. Um, located yes. in the historic center of Stijes the seaside resort at the south of Barcelona since 2013. It aims to promote contemporary art among the collectors and art lovers of Spain, Europe, and abroad and beyond. Um, through solo and group shows in the gallery, participation in international art fairs and collaborations with contemporary art museums, OOA Gallery gives visibility to the creativity and contemporary artistic diversity of Africa. Strongly rooted in their respective identities and stories, the established, it, the established and emerging artists represented by the gallery distinguished themselves by their creative freedom and the originality of their fluid visual languages. I would like to introduce and welcome Sorella Acosta, who is the director and curator of OOA Gallery from Barcelona. Thanks for joining us today at Artex. Thank you, and I'm very happy Fantastic. to be here with you. Thank you. Fantastic. So I'm going to kick off our first question with, uh, I'm going to start with Nubuke uh, Foundation. Could you tell us a bit about where your gallery is based and talk to us about the art scene in Ghana, um, out of Accra? Um, so Nubuke is based in a um, residential area in the east side of Accra, northeastern side of Accra. Um, once upon a time, we were on the outskirts, but you know, Accra has expanded in the last 10 or so. 15 years since we've been here and is now really considered a very sort of vibrant part of the city. But um, we are anchored within an affluent uh, group of people, the academics, the university is on the other side, and then we have the indigenous sort of Ghana community also very close by. 
So that really is what dictates our programming at the Booker. Um, 15 years ago, when we decided to set up the foundation, um, the art scene in Ghana was very, very quiet. Um, I think Ghana had been through so many upheavals that it was difficult for creative people to find the space to, to, to create, um, people to showcase their work. So that was what sort of spurred on our, our founding, just to give an avenue for creative people to meet their peers, to meet audiences, to experiment and showcase their work to audiences. Um, even though we started off um, just sort of looking at visual artists, we realized that we needed to expand um, the work that we do to other creative groups. And I think that really helped to bolster uh, the visual arts work because their peers were not just within the space of visual artists, it expanded to writers, poets, drama, you know, theater, you know, the, you know, very sort of vibrant body of creative people. And so we offered our space to them and that is how come the book is now where we are today. I mean, and most recently fashion, because we had a, fa a virtual fashion show with Christy Brown. Um, Indeed. Which took place at Nibuke, it was, was very beautiful. Yeah. Fashion, uh, food, everything. Pieces yeah. of art also, <laughs> wearable pieces of Indeed, art. Yes. Um, could you <laughs> also quickly tell us um, what you describe as the focus of your gallery? So I, I noticed that you're, the three artists that you've have featured are, are all Ghanaian artists. Um, you're featuring Jonathan Agre, Kofi Satoji, and uh, Rufai Zakari. So um, is, is that an intentional focus on your part to focus on developing Ghanaian artists at this time for Nibuke? It is indeed. I mean, as I said already, it, it was, it's a very difficult period in, in when we set up and it was very deliberate that we should support the practice of Ghanaian artists. Okay. Um, even though we are doing so, uh, our gallery is not exclusively just to showcase Ghanaian art. We also open it up to, you know, showcasing works from other countries. In fact, we've had collaborations with countries in Nigeria, we've had um, Netherlands, the US, you know, we, we always sort of open up to artists from other countries, but the foundation believes that work still needs to be done, especially for Ghanaian artists. So any opportunity that we have, we would really like to focus our attention on that. Yeah. So, you know, the artists that we're showing, we're looking at the breadth of very young and upcoming, who's Rufai. Um, Jonathan is kind of mid career and the very experienced one, who's Kofi, who's actually also a co-founder of Nubuka Foundation. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> Um, so, Sorella, could you tell us a little bit about the art scene um, in Barcelona? And, um, you know, you have OOA Gallery focusing on um, presenting African artists from different African countries to the rest of the world, when your primary market is um, Western Europe and probably other countries as, as well. Could you tell us how you see this um, art world now converging, where African art is now becoming as, as globally recognized as Western artists. And you can piggyback that on top of telling us a little bit about the art scene in Barcelona right now with collectors. Yes. Um, we, we are not based in the center of Barcelona, but uh, 20, 35 kilometers at the salt in uh, Sitges. It's um, um, a luxury seaside resort, but not only uh, luxury, it's also uh, artistical, a very, an, an, a very important center because uh, Sitges at the, at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century uh, has a lot of um, uh, Catalonian and Spanish artists and um, in, in Sitges uh, they organized uh, at the beginning of 20th century a lot of uh, art festivals with poetry, with dance, with painting, uh, with uh, different uh, types of art and um, that's why we, we decided to be there because uh, we, we have not only Spanish and Catalonian people here, but we have also a lot of uh, foreign um, uh, Europeans. They, they have here a second residence. And between these uh, European from the north of Europe, uh, we have a lot of collectors. 
Uh, also, the architecture is here very beautiful. It's very pleasant to, to work and to live here. But also the, the people who has a second residence, um, they, they, they like to decorate and they like like to collect art. We have uh, people from uh, the, the North, uh, the Norway, uh, Germany, uh, the Netherlands, uh, England, uh, France, Belgium. And that's why it's very interesting because it's uh, international. And I think for art, it's important to be in an international center of art and an art artistic place. But you know, in, um, in, in Barcelona, you have a lot of galleries, uh, I think, uh, already 50 galleries, but more specialized in um, Catalan art with Catalan painters. And we uh, focus only on African art because we, um, we have traveled a lot during 20 years uh, uh, through different uh, African countries. And we met a lot of artists in their studio and <laughs> they, they wanted to, 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 to bring their artworks to Europe. And so uh, after my uh, first, um, career in the organizing of art fairs in Brussels during 15 years, uh, we decided to move to Barcelona, first more at the, uh, in the Pyrenees site, but that was too far far from, uh, from Barcelona. And so we decided to open the gallery in 2013 in, in Sitges. And at the beginning, um, the selection of the artist was more in function of my experience uh, as um, as um, managing director of different art fairs. And now it's true that we select more in function of a CV, in function of the, the bio, in function of the list of shows. Uh, and we try to, uh, to present to our collectors uh, also established artists, but also um, more emerging and mid-career artists. But the focus is contemporary African art. Fantastic. So, um, so, so this year at ArtX, you, you're featuring five artists. So that, that's, that's a lot. Um, I wonder if, if you had been able to come physically, had we had a physical fair this year, do you think you would still have presented five artists or did you take advantage of the fact that it's virtual? So it's an opportunity to um, present a couple more? Uh, it's uh, last year, I think we presented uh, four artists. Uh, uh, I, I think, but and the stand was not, the, the booth was not so big. It was, I think, 24, 25 square meters. It's true that for five, five artists, you need a bigger stand. Uh, when you have a, a booth of 24, I think three artists is, uh, is, is the best uh, number for presenting the, the artist. But uh, it's true that um, I, I like to present the, the different artistic languages that we have in, in our gallery at this moment. And uh, be, between the five uh, artists that we present now, uh, there is a, a lot of variety. And uh, it's interesting for uh, our, the, the collectors, they are coming normally to, uh, to Artix, that they can see uh, that art from Congo, art from Ivory Coast, art, art from Cameroon, art from Kenya. They are very different. It's not African art. It's not the same in every country. No, um, it, it's a continent. Uh, and uh, it's so, uh, there is so a, a variety of uh, different styles, uh, different approaches that for me, it was important to present these five artists this year. Exactly. That, that's such an in interesting point that that's important to share um, with, with uh, potential collectors from other countries to help them understand that African art is not a typeface. Yes. You know, it's not a stereotype and it really, really varies from country to country. So I, I think ArtX is a fantastic platform to show just how diverse um, that is. Um, Odile, could you please tell me about um, at least two of the artists that you're presenting this year, um, that, you've, that you're presenting at ArtX this year, if you could just highlight your top two. <laughs> I wonder if they're my top two. I'll highlight two of the... But, but um, if you highlight two of the three yeah. for us. Great. Um, I'm going to talk about um, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Ivory. Um, you know, he is a watercolorist and watercolor is a very particular medium, um, which I think a lot of people are not able to, to master. And um, he is, is mid thirties, he's quite young, I believe. And I don't know of any other sort of watercolorist in Ghana. 
um, the other watercolorists that I know um, have passed away. And so I was very, very excited when I met him and just enamored by the fact that he, you know, there's so much going on in the art scene in Ghana today. Um, a lot of installation work, a lot of performance, a lot of um, sort of ephemeral work and that he's chosen this medium to, to portray his practice. Um, I just find that I'm draw, drawn into his work, you know, with the kind of subtle hues, um, the dusk. We dawn. can see why. Say that again. I said, we can see why it's a beautiful piece. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, 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 his work's just kind of very romantic, I find. Um, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to show him. We already show him here, actually, in our gallery, but um, I've never sort of taken a large body of his works outside before, and I just felt that. And also what I know about the, the market in, in, in Nigeria, Not I know that the, the fair is international, but I know also that the Nigerian collectors also like watercolor. Um, so I just wanted to share this, this his work with them, um, just, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm happy about. The other artist whose work I want to talk about is Kofi Satoji. Um, very, very versatile, he's a sculptor, he's a painter, he's a photographer. Um, I find that his, his sculpting, he, he started work working under the studio of Saka Kwe, one of Ghana's very um, most um, eminent sculptors. So you always find the resonance of sculptor, sculpture in his work. Um, the head number five, for example, to me looks like a sculpture and he was talking to us about that work and um, just observing people whilst you know, in public transport, looking at their, their, their expressions, um, looking at the way they relate to other people so he's managed to capture, you know, these nuances uh, and sort of seeming thoughts in, in, in the work. And I think going into his studio, most of the time, I find that he would always have the sculpture itself. Um, so we have the 3D rendition of the of the paint, painted up, uh, work, also guiding him when he's working. So I, I find his works quite fascinating. And also he's got um, a very, um, um, cheeky way of sort of portraying his work, especially the work like the masqueraders, uh, where he's, he, it's actually a serious um, topic, which he, he talks about um, our politics. Everybody knows how we like talking about politics in that part of the world and politicians are so much in our in our day-to-day -day life. But he manages to portray the seriousness of his of the subject through a very, especially the masqueraders is just talking about politicians, just kind of how he sees them, um, you know, in the day to day. Um, this, the other work is also for me, almost like a sculpture, you know, talking about the 13th key. Again, it's about his musings about what goes on in people's heads, what good people want to find out, which he feels already have. Uh, um, so that's what this work is about. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the works I feel are, are representative of his, of his practice in a way. Even though they are, they are all paintings. So I, I have an interesting question about um, Kofi um, also being the co the founder or co-founder of Nubuke Foundation, right? So um, so you find that um, he it seems like he's he just recently started producing artworks again after being focused on other parts of his of his life. Um, would you say that the um, sort of like the slowdown that the pandemic has brought upon us? Uh, gave a lot of inspiration and time for him to produce some of these works that we're seeing today. Was that in any way an sorry, influence? Sorry, can you, can you repeat the question? Because I lost the first part of it. Oh, I'm sorry. Could you, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can, yeah. Okay. So I was saying that Kofi is also, an interesting point about Kofi, he's also the founder of Nubuke Foundation. Yeah. Right. So um, 
it's interesting that he spent a lot of years focused on other business aspects of his life. And we're now seeing this art, the artist in, in mm -hmm. him coming out, especially with these works. Um, yeah. Would you say that the slowdown and the repeated quarantine in brought upon by, by the pandemic this year sort of gave him the inspiration and time to produce some of the works that we're seeing today? Because I noticed Actually, that- um, he has kind of stepped back from his role in the, in the organization. So for the past, 10 years, he was the creative director. And uh, last year, he stepped back from the, from the foundation. So he's spending more time actually in his studio. So um, I guess getting back his, his, his um, creative side, he's focusing more on, on what he wants to do in the, in the last next few years. So that's, that's what he's been doing. He has um, stepped back from, I guess we, we are, we focus on the foundation for 10 years and he feels that he's set it up um, to be able to um, an adult an institution to take its, 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 its um, back its own way really. So he stepped back from, from day to day. I mean, it's fantastic that we now get to see, um, we now get to see uh, art from him. So so it's, uh, we're, we're very pleased to see that. Sorella, I, I just want to talk about a, a, a couple of you, about two of you. Yeah. Thank you, Odile. Sorella? Yes. I just want to talk about two or three of your artists that um, you're featuring today. Um, the first one that, that popped out to me when I saw your, your list of artists was Bob Nosa, and, um, who's, who's Nigerian. And uh, you brought him last year to, to ArtX and his his very thought-provoking pieces, <laughs> um, his very thought-provoking pieces um, did very well at, at the fair last year. So could you tell us a little bit about your decision to bring him back this year and tell us about one or two more of the additional of the other artists that you're introducing yes. to us? Yes, we, we, we met um, Bob Noza, uh, first his artwork, uh, because uh, two years ago we were visiting uh, another gallery in, uh, in Lagos, Signature, and he was there preparing his uh, solo show. And I saw that work and uh, I didn't uh, know him. And I said, wow, that's very interesting. That's, so you say uh, provoking, but uh, for me it was it was real. Uh, I I saw through his work uh, a honest man, a honest artist, and uh, that's why after the, after that uh, I say okay we will we, we want to contact uh, Bob Noza, and uh, he he has sent me a, a lot of artworks, and for me it was very interesting because it was innovative, uh, innovative because the technique, uh, he used acrylic, he, use, uh, he uses also um, spray paint, uh, collage of founded material in some works. Um, and the, 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 the canvas is texture, textures. Uh, there, there are a lot of um, material structure that uh, makes his works very uh, unique. And then, well, that's for the technique, but the, the topic, the, the subjects are very interesting because he, he condemns uh, through his art uh, social problems in, uh, in Nigeria, in Lagos. But these problems, they are not only in Lagos, they are universal. And that's why um, we, we decided to organize in Barcelona um, um, an exhibition, uh, a solo show around uh, domestic violence. And he, uh, he created for us uh, 12 works, uh, very interesting works. And during um, the, the show, uh, we, it was a sold out. Uh, people here in Barcelona, they, they, they were impressed, impressed of his style, impressed of the themes, impressed of the topics, and um, <laughs> also his, his studio, the protest art studio, uh, says what it wants to say. I, I think he's honest because he, he tries uh, through his artwork to change the world, to make the world better. And he also he wants to attract other artists to join the, to join him and uh, to, uh, uh, to to 
say to the government and to the, the economic and the social um, governments in, in our world that they have to change, they, that it's a problem, that, uh, that uh, the, the people, they are victims and they are, they are working and they are living in poverty. But it's, it's important, the poverty in, um, in Lagos, but it's the same in Barcelona. In Barcelona, you have also a lot of people, they are living in poverty. And that's why it's, um, the topics he he uh, he treats it's um, it's universal and that's why I like this uh, this uh, this artist and his artwork and also the combination of the colors it's very impactful um, and the the eyes the, the the people they are crying they are uh, you 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 feel the the angry of some people there and also in, in this work it's interesting because it's complementary the the title of the work is complementary. That's why uh, he says that if the artists, they are coming together and they, they want to act to change the world, they, they they can have uh, power. Uh, also, people when they are together, they, they can they can act and they can have um, power against government. Uh, for me, it's a very very good artist. And you know, when we organized the, um, the fair. Uh, the, the curator of the modern and contemporary um, museum in Gdansk in Poland invited him for um, uh, an individual exhibition in the museum and uh, this for 2020 and despite of the the pandemic the exhibition was held from May till September in uh, in Poland with 50 works it was very important with the very big catalog. I think it's a it's an artist uh, with a, a potential for museums. I I completely agree. Bob Nosa's uh, works are, you know, speak to a real naked truth that uh, that very few of us dare to um, dare to acknowledge. I, I would say. Um, can you tell me a bit more about um, Evans Mugua from from Kenya? Um, so yes. You, yes. You Evans, uh, Evans is um, a real uh, other style. <laughs> Nothing. It's very, very different. Very different. Uh, <laughs> he is also very innovative, um, also with his technique, because he's using little dots with oil on plexiglass. And not only one side of the plexiglass, but both sides of the plexiglass. And he creates uh, characters, um, dancers, uh, sometimes one dancer, sometimes two dancers. Uh, and they, they are, when you, you are uh, you, you don't see that in, on the picture but when you are before the artwork and you are at the right and then before and then uh, at the left um, he creates with um, his little dots different layers and uh, the dancers they they are like in movement uh, he creates a 3d effect and then the the background uh, are um, self-created uh, pictograms. He duplicates the pictograms and he print that on photo paper. And this photo paper give, uh, gives also brilliance. Uh, also. So his uh, characters, they are very pop with um, the color in the ha hair, with um, the sunglasses. Uh, it gives um, uh, visibility to an Africa, a positive Africa, an energetic, energetic Africa. Uh, when I see that work, uh, that, that uh, type of works, I, I want to love Africa. Uh, Africa is for the future. Africa is in motion. And that's very important. It's not the, the bad uh, side of Africa. No, it's the very uh, positive, innovative, dynamic Africa. And I like his work. Mm -hmm. It is. It's it's very beautiful work, and it's unfortunately with this uh, virtual version of this exhibition. I mean, this is clearly a multimedia, uh, multi-dimensional piece, which which is very hard to appreciate from a, from a virtual point of view. Um, yes. Uh, also for Bob Noza, it's the same because there there is texture in in the in the canvas. Uh, you have also the sometimes uh, collage of founded materials. 
cycles and you can't see that the, um, at the same uh, than when you are before the, the artwork and it's the same with uh, uh, with Evans because you you miss the the brilliance you miss the different layers you you miss um, the, the, the 3d effect but bon, we, when when a collector is uh, calling me we can make a video and yeah. then we send the video and with the video we we, we can uh, go around the artwork and uh, we we can we try to 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 give the the possibility of uh, the 3D of the video that more than with only um, a picture. Um, so, so, so Arla, I'm just going to stay with you on, on this on this last point before I move to, to Odile. Um, are you finding that, um, that uh, in, in spite of the pandemic, are you finding that collectors are still collecting and acquiring works? Um, during this time, are, are you seeing perhaps a, 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 an increase in this or have you seen a decline or has it been about the same? And, and also, are you seeing new collectors approaching um, OOA for, for, for some of your pieces or for some of your artists? Um, when we started the gallery in 2011, we started directly with uh, the creation of a database and a website. And then after some years, we, we were partner on uh, Artsy. And that's why we are, we are working since uh, several years online. But it's true that uh, since the last five years, uh, at the beginning, we had 80% uh, sales in the gallery and 20% online. And now this year, it's 20% um, <laughs> it's in the gallery and 80% online. Um, but uh, I think it's uh, interesting because with the online, we have the possibility to present the works all over the world. Um, and that's our focus now. We don't want only present the works here in Barcelona, in Spain, in Catalonia, or in Europe. No, we want to present the works of our uh, artists, the artists that we represent, uh, to the different uh, continents in the, in the US, in Asia, and in Africa. We have now collectors all over the world, and that's important um, for galleries li like us, uh, I think that the, the online is a benefit. It's a benefit because we, we are open for, the, the, for uh, an international sales and not only a local or a national sales. That's important. But it's true that when we start um, in, in, uh, in March with the newsletters, okay, we had a lot of response, but now I've seen that all the galleries are online. <laughs> Yes. And so we have uh, more competition and the collectors, it's possible that they have a lot of a lot of um, newsletters and proposals online. And it's possible also that uh, well, we have to regulate that because uh, I see now uh, in October, November that it's possible that because all the galleries are online that um, yes the, the collectors they have a, a lot of proposals and now we have to make the difference we have to make the difference with a good website with good videos with good sales online that's important because everybody is <laughs> is now online also through the social media uh, at the beginning uh, well, we were on Instagram, and but now you see that all the galleries on, are on, on Instagram, and they are very active. Uh, okay, exactly. and that's that's important that we can make the difference with best tools and uh, to to be very proactive, and that we 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 go to the the collectors and that we feel also what they what they want. It's true that um, the online communication attracts uh, new and younger collectors. Because you know, uh, the, the, before collectors were more, more um, above 60, 65 years, but now we have also young collectors, 40, 45 years, and, and they manipulate very good uh, all the social media and uh, and the, the present the, the virtual exhibitions that we uh, that we prepare for for them. That that's um, that seems to be happening uh, across board. Odile, are you finding the same? Are you finding? Um, that uh, obviously, you're, you're seeing what what I've noticed is you have a lot of artists working more now or producing 
more pieces than they've traditionally done in the past. And I think the fact that um, this stillness of time that we've had um, in some ways as, as a gift that we've had this year has contributed to that. So you see now, you, you know, a lot of galleries have more works to show from artists to collectors. Are you seeing a lot more collectors um, still approaching you at Nubuke for, um, for specific artists or are you, are you seeing a, an, an increase or a decline or is it the same? There's definitely an increase. I mean, the, the pandemic has changed the way we, we use the online. Um, we usually would have used the online just to send links to uh, people who inquire to say that this is a, a viewing room um, or, or just to have a look at what we have showing in the gallery on site. Um, but now with the viewing rooms, we're actually using that to complement um, what is happening here. And I think in the future, what we're going to do is to program online exhibitions as well as um, what is happening in the gallery here. I mean, the, the, the community that we have is definitely people who walk in, but we cannot disregard those who are growing, who are not physically in Ghana, who the only way we can interact with them is through the, through the internet. So we have to change our programming and look at what we can do here and all, also what we can do offline or online rather. So from also, next year. Okay, sorry, yeah. let me let you finish. Yeah, so from next year we'll have exhibitions here which are shown online as well, but also just online exhibitions which are not going to be showing physically in our gallery. Are you, that, that's interesting. Are you noticing that your collectors are also younger? Yeah, we have we have that demographic the shift in demographic, and also a shift in the age group as well as you know reaching people worldwide. So, our last exhibition that we had that is when we launched the viewing room. I think probably seventy percent of the people who bought from our, from the from the exhibition were not resident in Ghana. Okay, well that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so, um, are there specific works that you're showing this year that um, that you're especially happy to be showing? Um, and if so, which one, which ones are they and by which of your artists? Um, Rufai, who's actually in this current exhibition, you know, when the pandemic hit and we're all, all over the place, um, a lot of the programs that we had sort of scheduled to run because we don't always run exhibitions for sale. We also do, we actually do exhibitions which are showcasing the artist's works. Um, so we needed to come up with programming. And through our research, we found Rufai, who's been working in the upper east region, about 12 hours away from Accra. And mm -hmm. his practice is based in the community. He works with women who work with him in all the stitching. He works with uh, waste materials, plastics, you know, environmental concerns as well. So we showed him in the gallery and it was very, very, the response was you know, phenomenal. And I'm, I'm so happy that, you know, at least we've continued to show him again in, in this, in this um, fair. Um, his works are fresh, they're bold, sassy, and, Bye. you know, it's just an inviting, um, collection of, you know, body of works, which I felt, you know, um, I'm very happy that we, we, we found him and we're showing him and working with him as well. And there seems to be a, a, a textural aspect to his work as well in terms of the sort of materials that he's, he's using. And again, because we're virtual, we have to sort of, we, we have to zoom in a, a lot more, you know, where he's using like recycled Maggie wraps. Yeah. As sort of like the leather background. strips, um, food food wrappers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So okay. his works are all sort of stitched. Yeah, actually, the, the one behind me, if you can see properly, is, is one of his works. I see. So is <laughs> so is there one of one or two of his pieces that you're particularly glad to to be showing to the Artex world this year? So we can zoom in on that. I like the uh, I like the girl in this in this in the bathing suit. Yes, I was hoping you choose that. Talk about that. 
<laughs> She's kind of sassy. I mean, considering, you know, what he described as his background, you know, sort of living in a Muslim community, uh, very conservative, I think this is almost like, you know, a, a, you know, a, protest, a protest statement on its own. Okay. And I, I just kind of like a sassiness. Yes, it's 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 quite a departure from uh, from a conservative background. It is, it is, and um, it's almost like you know his own sort of protest statements with with his work. In fact, I think most of his works are, are women. Um, there are a few men in it as well, but most of them are women, and he just kind of give them this bold uh, persona, which I I, I quite like. They're, they're very making a statement just by their body movement and their stance. And you can see this um, empowered women in his works. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Is there a, a, a second piece that you'd like us to zoom in on from any of your other artists from either Kofi or Jonathan before I move on to OOA? I mean, I, I love Jonathan's work. So let's see. Um, Elmina at dusk, I think. So our admin is trying to do a quick zoom on that for us. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, dusk at Elmina. Can we please focus, zoom in on that a little bit so that Odile can tell us? Fortunately, it's, kind of, it's, a, long, it's a long piece of... Long piece. Probably a bit difficult, yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, Elmina, because, um, well, I went to school in Cape Coast, which is not far away from Elmina. We spent a lot of our um, recreational times at the beach in Elmina. And this is just kind of reminiscent of going to Elmina and just seeing the flotilla of, of boats there. And, you know, even though the sea is, he's managed to, to kind of give the sea a calm hue. Um, and, and I just was drawn to this particular work as well, um, just because uh, the Atlantic, as we all know, is, is a very rough sea, but he's yeah. managed to tame it, tame it quite well in, in, this, in this picture and make it, you know, inviting, I should say. Um, yeah, that, that, that's one of the reasons why I was drawn to it. It's a beautiful piece. Thorella, are there um, specific works that you're particularly happy to be showcasing today? Um, if so, which one and by which artist? Yes, but normally when I um, decide to uh, make a selection, normally I, I like all the works. <laughs> but yes, there are, there are some works that I prefer than, than others. Uh, the, the artwork that we present by Angel, I like it a lot. It's World Best. I don't know if you have it. Angel, Angel World Best, yes. You can, you can find it. Okay, you can keep talking to us about it. Okay. I, I think and uh, it's an interesting work because you have the very important interaction between the well, uh, between the the look of the the character and uh, when and the person who is. Uh, uh, he's looking at the, at, at the artwork. I, I like also the contrast between the, the realistic uh, technique for the, the character and then the abstract uh, loaded uh, background with the logotypes of the, the fashion uh, marks, the fashion uh, logotypes. It's uh, very, very interesting. Uh, Angel is, is an, an, an artist that we, uh, we, we, we represent since uh, 2017. His uh, technique is uh, now very, very, very good. Uh, you, you feel also the, the, this uh, pop art uh, culture style um, and there, he he's very strong. There is an impact in his uh, in his artworks, um, and also there is always a message, uh, a message um, in relation with uh, the consumer uh, society that we have. And no, I, I like a lot of his work and uh, a lot of collectors because we we organized a solo show for him in June and. Uh, in two months, the 12 artworks were sold. 
uh, this year in, during the pandemic. Very, very good artist. And I think he, he will go very far because now um, we, we had a very good article by art critic uh, Paul Lester in, uh, the, from New York in White Hot Magazine for this art artist and uh, a lot of collectors from uh, from the United States uh, contacted me for to, to see his work. This work is the last work that we have um, and now he, he will start a, a new series for for the next exhibition we will organize next year in our in our gallery. Uh, another artist that I want to present uh, is um, Bodofis and raise a, an artwork uh, Vashfol. Uh, also very interesting because we present him last year. It's an artist from um, from uh, Congo. Uh, he's the eldest son of uh, Pierre Baudot, uh, well known internationally, and um, he 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 learned and he worked with his father since uh, till 2013. His father deceased in 2000. Uh, uh, 15 and uh, the work he's very interesting because he's in naive style uh, with acrylic sometimes he includes um, glitters and there is a lot of humor you see that the the, the chef Rimo, the cat with the sunglasses with the, the cigar uh, with the, the tie, uh, with the, the, the fish. No, it's very interesting. L last year, we, we sold also uh, one with a, a lion uh, to a very important collector in, um, in, in Lagos. And uh, he, he's interesting because it's naive, but there are little details. They, they are very uh, impressive. There's another one uh, with um, a, a cow Mad cow, Vashfol. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, this one, the 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 fourth. Yes. Also, the the position, the the jacket, the sunglasses, the slippers. Oh, it's crazy! It's crazy. And I, I received uh, an inquiry from um, Artsy between uh, with you with. With the Arctic Lagos. Uh, no, it's an artist also. Uh, he has two styles. He has a surrealistic style and he has uh, the style of the African dandies, but with the, the head, the animal heads. And you see the contrast between the, the Western success makers of the jackets and then the, the tradition of the animals. They, they are more African. Uh, you, you see the, the mix between um, the continent, uh, the European continent, and the African continent. Yes, uh, it's an artist, he's now working uh, part of the time in Kinshasa and part of the time in France. Okay, okay. Very, very uh, interesting pieces from Buddha. Thank you for sharing that. Just before we move on, um, I, just a quick question about um, Boris and Angé, or Angel. Um, I noticed yes. in his bio that um, he he has a very strong admiration for, for Amy Sherald and for Kane Wiley. Do you see um, some sort of influence and reference yeah. from, from Yes, uh, for me, there, there is a, an influence from the pop culture from Andy Warhol, uh, an influence <laughs> from the consumer culture. Um, and it's true that in, in, in the technique, you, you can feel the, the influences that, that you said. But for me now, uh, the, the, the mix of the, the hyper-realistic um, bodies and, and black bodies, but they are black, blue, black. The, 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 the color is very important, but then with the contrast with the, the logo types, in the in the background is very um, special and unique for this artist, and that's why a lot of collectors um, now they, they they want to. When I have uh, new works, directly I receive uh, inquiries, and uh, it's in, in two or three weeks uh, we, we can sell one. It's uh, it's incredible the the impact that he has in, in two or three years. <laughs> It's it's very imp impressive how, how his um traject his yeah. trajectory has um, evolved in in such a short period of time and um, it's it's very exciting to see 
this yes. with um, emerging um, African artists. Um, well, last year, last year we presented two works uh, on uh, Arctic Lagos from Angel and. Uh, I received during the fair uh, different orders for him because people, they, they, that's interesting in, uh, in Arctic Lagos that we, we try to present also artists they, that the collectors of Lagos um, don't know at this moment. Yeah. Um, artists from different continents of Africa, uh, for yeah. different countries of Africa. Yes, yes, extremely interesting. Odile, um, we, ha we have a question from the audience. Um, can you talk about African sculptures and what's happening in this space. It seems um, very little of it is represented. Um, yeah, or is I, I, I saw that question. Um, you have, um, and just to <laughs> back off of that, you have, um, so I, I don't know if it's specific to collectors in this part of the world who seem to have a, most, a stronger uh, uh, affinity for, um, for, 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 for sculptures as well, or not as much on sculptures, but a, a bit more for um, physical artwork. So could you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about sculptures and for, for the sake of collectors who are trying to figure out how to start collecting this? Well, I mean, there are a few, Kofi definitely is, is still sculpting. Um, what, in then, what? Well, he's done things in ceramics, bronze, wood, and I think, uh, not long ago, he was commissioned to do some work in ceramics, which he's done. Um, and I think it's, it's also probably the interest of, of uh, collectors or new um, people coming on the scene about what they're interested in. Um, a lot of painting, painting is, 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 uh, is really out there. Um, and there's another Ghanaian artist who actually does not live in, in Ghana, he's in the US, but he's also sculpting. Uh, sculpting is around, but we are not showing, I guess we're showing 20% or less than 20% of, of things which are shown in the gallery space are sculpture. And I mean, the last exhibition we had, we had an, a, an artist called um, Elinam Damali. She was actually doing some um, installation work, um, but it was you know, pieces made out of uh, rattan and, and sort of stuff like that. So it's more geared to installation, more than sculpted pieces at, at the moment with the younger artists. Um, off the top of my head, I cannot remember any young artists who are uh, uh, sculpting, you know, purely in that medium. Fantastic. Um, how can galleries ensure that their art selections for fairs are a great reflection of the diverse offerings of art from African artists on the continent and the diaspora? That's a good question. Yes. That's a good question. That, that I would imagine that that can be um, a bit of a struggle. It's um, a bit of a, it's also a tall order. Um, you're, stuck between, um, you're stuck between presenting art and having a commercial um, leaning behind you, you know, sort of like music and how you're thinking that, you know, this is the beat that everyone likes. So if you want to create a hit, a hit single or a hit song, maybe use a, a beat like that. Do you find that that's uh, a bit of, of pressure on your part? Um, from on my part, um... I guess it's because of the work that we're already doing, which is showcasing the work of artists from Ghana, it is not so difficult to continue taking the body of works which are representative of Ghanaian artists um, into the fair. But the fair is a commercial space. We are there to make money as well. Um, if you know anything about institutions, art institutions on the continent, you know that we have to do so much to generate our own funds to support the work that we're doing. So the fair for us is an avenue to do that um, with very little um, effort on our part. Um, I, I know that people will want to see more, but also the selection panel of the, of the fair is also, also curating what comes in. And I guess maybe at some point, they, they may also need to be speaking to that about what is the eventual body of work which is presented at the fair and whether it's representative of 
uh, art coming out of the continent. Absolutely. Um, mm. So I would imagine that this is a, a major concern for you because of your audience. Um, yes. um, when we make a selection for an art fair, it's, um, it's true that it's important that we, we present one or two artists that we know that will sell. That's important because the, the investment for us to come to the fair, the transport costs, the importation costs are important. Right. But uh, every time I try to present also young artists, like th there is one of them, we, we, we didn't speak about them, but Gnoite, France Gala Gnoite is from Ivory Coast. He's a young artist. Uh, he's working without brushes. He, he, he works with uh, sponges, uh, with uh, blowers. And I, I like to present young artists too, because because I think a gallery, that's um, one of the objectives of the gallery is to uh, present new artists, young artists. And uh, um, the collectors, they appreciate that. Also, when, um, when we invest in an art fair, it's not only um, what we can sell during the fair, it's also the contacts that we make for the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they have our, um, our dates, they have our visit card or our business card. They, they go to our um, 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 website, they go on Artsy and there they can see different artists. That's why I think what we present to the fair, it's, um, it's a, a little selection, mm -hmm. but what's more important is the contacts for the future. Uh, and that's, um, it's, we, we, we make more contacts when we are uh, presential um, active there on the fair than only when it's online, because you, you know, when we are on the fair, you, you, <laughs> we have, I don't know, but 10,000 people, they, they, are, they, they are walking there. And we make more contacts uh, for the future than, than now. But um, I, I think that, um, it's important that we can present uh, mid-career or established artists, one or two, but also that we can present young artists. But that's really uh, our objective. It's to be um, a vitrine for the for the young artists. And for us, uh, because Angel, when I met him in 2017, he was never uh, be uh, exposed in uh, exhibited in Europe. The, his first uh, exhibition in Europe was in our gallery. Uh, I, I want to try to do the same for other young artists. Uh, that's very important because established artists, you know, well, they, they will sell everywhere <laughs> and, with, and with every gallery. But what's important is the, the really objective of a gallery to, uh, to help young emerging artists to, uh, to have a good imaging, uh, a good notoriety, to contact collectors, to present the work to foundations, to present the work to museums, and so that they can go up, up, up. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's very important. And collectors, they appreciate to see works from young artists. So, so, um, so you, you clearly saw, um, since you've been in the art art field um, professionally for a number of years, you saw um, Sorella a definite um, market for for African art. Um, so you're seeing so we're now seeing a rise in the demand for African art a, a, across the world. You're seeing African artists presenting at international shows, um, 154 Miami Art Basel, and very um, very prestigious shows a, across the world. Do you think that this is here to stay? Uh, yes, when I started uh, to, to work in the art fairs in Brussels, uh, there was only, I think, one or two galleries, international galleries, presenting one or two African artists. And we had 30,000 visitors, collectors, and we present 120 galleries. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but that was in uh, two, uh, between uh, 2000, uh, 2000 and 2010. 
Um, but I've seen that since 2010, you have also big galleries. Uh, they, they select more African artists. Big galleries, they are all around with African art. And that's very important that now um, we can present African contemporary artists, not only in specialized contemporary African art fairs, but we can also present them in global contemporary fairs. That's important for the contemporary African markets. Mm -hmm. Also during the auctions, you see that uh, mm. the, the uh, African artists, they can compete with the other uh, European of uh, American or Asian artists. You see um, Abudia, now he's in the top 10 uh, of all the, the, the sales of, Africa, no, of contemporary artists in 2019. That's very important. I think that um, African art is refreshing, mm -hmm. is impactful. Uh, there is a, a lot of energy and that energy that you can feel um, through the African people in dance, in uh, fashion, uh, you feel it now also in art. And with the, the social media, they can present their work all over the world. That's why now the, the, the US and Asia uh, are all also very important art markets for the African contemporary art. Thank you so much, Sorella. I think that was um, very insightful. I'll just ask Odile if you had something else to also chip in as we round up. No, I think um, Sorella has kind of ended it on that on a very high note. Um, as she's saying, you know, the galleries are now, this is a specialized fair for um, are coming from the continent. We have the global affairs also taking in galleries that are specifically representing us. We have the auction houses also. Um, what I'd say is that all the things that we are talking about are happening, most of them are happening uh, not on our continent. And it's important that we also develop that infrastructure here. So at Ex Lagos, well done. It's Thank five you. years and hopefully counting. Um, so just looking at how we can just kind of take that up and do things that matter to us and do it for ourselves, you know, on a high quality level. Thank you so much. <laughs> Those are very kind words. Um, again, I'd like to thank you both, Sorella of OOA Gallery and Odile of Lubuke Foundation for spending this um, time with us at 40 Minutes With. Um, thank you so much to our audience too for joining. We hope it was an insightful conversation and that you guys were also um, able to learn one or two things and also chime in in the chat. Um, please join us again tomorrow. We'll be on at 5 p.m. Um, and we'll just let Toyi connect so that we can have her say goodbye and close it out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, so much, the professional team of Artix Lagos. Uh, we are so sad that we can't go there physically, but next year we will be there with you uh, and with, I hope so, very good uh, young and emerging and mid-career artists. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Sorella. Thank you very much, Odile. Thank you very much, our ex, and to our audience that joined us today. See you, you. again on Saturday. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank Bye. you.